Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, um, author of On This Day in Tudor History and a few other Tudor history books. Now, I'm going to take you back to 1541 today, um, and that, of course, is in the reign of King Henry VIII. It was on this day in Tudor history, the 18th of October 1541, that Margaret Tudor, sister of King Henry VIII, died after suffering a stroke at Methven Castle in Perthshire in Scotland. Margaret was laid to rest at the Carthusian Priory of St John in Perth, which unfortunately was later destroyed. Now, I want to pay tribute uh, to this Tudor lady and Queen Consort of Scotland by just giving you a sort of brief overview of Margaret Tudor's life. So, Margaret Tudor was born on the 28th of November 1489 at Westminster Palace. Margaret was the eldest surviving daughter of King Henry VII and his wife Elizabeth of York and she was named after her paternal grandmother Lady Margaret Beaufort. Margaret was baptised at St Margaret's Church Westminster um, on the 30th of November of that year. She spent her childhood at Sheen and also at Elton Palace but was sent to Scotland at the age of 13 to marry King James IV of Scotland following the 1502 Treaty of Perpetual Peace between England and Scotland. Margaret and James had been married by proxy on the 25th of January 1503 at Richmond Palace, but married in person on the 8th of August 1503 at Holyrood Abbey. James and Margaret went on to have six children, including the future King James V of Scotland, who was father of Mary, Queen of Scots. Now, James IV, Margaret's husband, died at the Battle of Flodden in 1513, which was that famous battle between Scotland and England. Uh, Of course, the uh, forces of Margaret's brother, uh, King Henry VIII. So, must be a bit tricky having your brother and your husband on opposite sides. For a time, Margaret acted as regent, and although she had opposition being seen as the enemy's sister, she managed to reconcile Scotland and England. Things changed, however, when Margaret secretly married Archibald Douglas, 6th Earl of Angus, a member of the powerful uh, Scottish House of Douglas. When the news of their marriage got out, Margaret encountered opposition from the nobles and in September 1514, the Privy Council ruled that she'd acted against the term of her husband's will, her late husband's will, James IV's will, and could no longer act as regent. She was replaced by John Stuart, 2nd Duke of Albany, who took custody of her sons, James and Alexander, keeping them at Stirling Castle. In 1515, a now pregnant Margaret and her second husband fled across the Scottish border into England and were taken in by Lord Dacre, uh, Warden of the Marches. At Harbottle Castle in Northumberland on the 8th of October 1515, Margaret gave birth to a little girl who would become Lady Margaret Douglas, who in turn was mother of Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley, who you'll know from his marriage to Mary, Queen of Scots, and then his, uh, his murder. He came to a sticky end. In December 1515, Margaret learned of the death of her son Alexander, Duke of Ross, which must have been devastating news. But there was more bad news to come. Her husband, Archibald, abandoned her to return to Scotland and uh, to make peace with Albany and escape a charge of treason. 
But Margaret didn't look back. She continued her journey on to London, where her brother, King Henry VIII, arranged lodgings for her at Scotland Yard in Whitehall. That Scotland Yard, of course, is now known as the sort of headquarters of the police in London. Uh, but then it was, a, you know, a royal abode. After a treaty was negotiated between Albany, Cardinal Wolsey and Henry VIII, Margaret returned to Scotland in 1517, only to find out that her husband had been living with Lady Jane Stuart in her absence. Uh, not good. Margaret decided that she wanted a divorce and sought her brother's help. However, Henry VIII at this time didn't believe in divorce and he was also unwilling to make an enemy of his brother-in-law, so he didn't support her. Margaret carried on fighting for her divorce, even enlisting the help of Albany, who even spread rumours that he and Margaret were lovers. In March 1527, Albany finally convinced Pope Clement VII to grant Margaret's petition and Margaret was divorced and went on to marry Henry Stuart on the 3rd of March 1528. So a third husband for Margaret. However, this marriage wasn't happy for long either. Margaret had managed to pick another unfaithful husband. So again, she fought for a divorce although this was not supported by her son, King James V. Now, Margaret was later able to reconcile herself with her third husband, and King James created him Lord Methven and gave the couple Methven Castle in Perthshire as their home. On the 12th of June, 1538, Margaret's son, James V, married Marie de Guise, or Mary of Guise, by proxy. And when Mary, or Marie, arrived in Scotland, she became good friends with her mother-in-law. They had a good relationship. Margaret died, of course, on this day in history, the 18th of October, 1541. But her line continued. Her great-grandson, King James VI of Scotland, who, of course, was son of Mary, Queen of Scots, inherited the English crown on the death of Margaret's niece, Elizabeth I, when Elizabeth died on the 24th of March 1603. James became King James I and he united Scotland and England. And interestingly, our present Queen here, uh, well not here in the UK, because I'm in Spain, but my Queen, because I'm a British citizen, Queen Elizabeth II is descended from Margaret Tudor. So Margaret's royal bloodline continues even today. So there's a link back to uh, Margaret Tudor, a royal link back to her. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking around about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live. And you can, of course, give this video a like. I really do appreciate you following uh, these videos. I'll be back tomorrow. See you then. Bye bye.